it's Miss Phoebus again, and this is Lesson 28, Multiplying and Factoring Out a Monomial. Alright, so we are on, if you have my notes, page 114, the learning goals for today. After um, you are finished with this video, you should be able to multiply polynomials. We're going to be multiplying by a monomial. Um, and then we're going to be looking at the product of two polynomials. Again, right now we're looking at a monomial times either a binomial or a trinomial or something else. And then I can also factor out a greatest common factor from a polynomial, and that greatest common factor will be a monomial. All right, here is our um, standard for today. We are multiplying polynomials. We're also beginning factoring, so we're adding and subtracting. We're multiplying. We don't divide in um, divide polynomials in this class. That's an algebra two concept, but we are going to factor, which is like undoing multiplication. So it's kind of like division, not quite, not exactly the same. All right, if you're following along in the notes, we're going to jump to page 120. And we are going to look at monomial multiplication. And we are going to recall the properties of exponents. That if I multiply terms by the same base, I have to add the exponents. So here, not when you're adding and subtracting, but when we multiply, the exponent is going to change. We should expect that. Okay, so these are just monomial times monomial. So because of that one term times one term, I should get one term. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the coefficients. Multiply the coefficients. Then I'm going to add the exponents of the variables that are the same. If you see in some of the future problems that are the same, some of the future problems, I have mixed variables. So I'm going to have to be multiplying my A's together. And when I do that, I add their exponents and B's and so on. So let's start with problem number one. Problem number one, I'm going to multiply my coefficients together. So I've got a negative 5 times a positive 6. That's going to be negative 30. Then I'm going to get my g's together. I'm going to write 1g, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the exponent. I'm going to have 6 plus 9. So I'm adding those two uh, exponents together to create a new exponent, which is going to be g plus uh, negative 30 g to the 15th. Now, you do not have to do this step. But that should be what's going on in your head is that 6 plus 9 is 15 to get that there. So if you do need to write it down, you're welcome to. And that's all you're doing, multiplying two monomials together. So let's look at number 2. We're going to multiply 3 times 5 and get 15. Y to the 7. And then this Y has an exponent. A lot of times people think that it's a 0, but just because it's not written, um, there is something there. If it was a 0, it it would be written or the whole entire variable wouldn't be there so there is a one so that's usually uh, one of the most common mistakes is to think that that y that five y y is to the zero power but it's not it's to the one to the first so this is uh, 15 y to the eighth power all right so let's look at number three we have coefficients. We're going to multiply negative 2 times negative 6. That's a positive 12. And then we're going to have a to the 4 plus 2 power, b to the 5 plus 3 power, and c to the 3rd. There's nobody to combine it with, so it just is going to stay the same. So let's clean this up. 12, a to the 6, b to the 8th. C cubed. Now, I like my um, variables in alphabetical order. That is not a requirement. So if you had 12 C cubed, A to the 6, and B to the 8th, that's absolutely the same answer. It's just in a different order. Um, so I'm looking for that. But you can't just swap exponents and, and their variables that they belong to. That doesn't work. All right, so why don't you try number four? See what you can do. All right, there is a 1 out in front here. 1 times negative 9 is negative 9. W, we have 1 with a 5, and we're multiplying it times 1 with a 2, so we're going to add the 5 and the 2. And then we've got our Z, 2, 
plus 5. We're adding those exponents. So I end up with negative 9, w to the 7th, c to the 7th. Now here is something that some people try to do. They're like, oh, let's just do this. I can simplify it even more. That doesn't work. You can't add the exponent on the w and the z's because those are two totally different variables. So do not fall into that trap of wanting to try to simplify it even more. You're actually creating a totally different problem. All right, we're going to look at mo monomial and polynomial multiplication. So it's just like using the distributive property. So number five is the distributive property, but I wanted you to see how similar like number six is going to be to number five. So let's look at number five. We're just distributing this two. Two is technically a monomial, right? It's a constant monomial. And so we've got negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 22. Now you can't combine any of these um, to simplify because they are not like terms. We have an x squared, we have an x, and we have a constant. So there's no combining like terms in number five. Let's look at number six. We're still going to be doing the distributive property, but then when I multiply x times x squared, my exponent is going to change, just like in the last problem. When I multiply x times x, that variable is going to change its exponent. Okay, so I'm still distributing. So let's focus on coefficients. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. This ends up being x to the first. And because we're multiplying, we're going to add the exponents. So x to the first plus the second. So x to the first times x to the second. I guess it's better to say x to the 1 plus 2. All right, negative 4 times negative 7 is a positive 28. This is x to the 1 plus, and then this guy has a 1, that one has a 1, so we're adding two 1s in our exponents, and then negative 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, and there is just an x to the first power. Let's clean it up just a little bit more. Again, this stage is not necessary, but I do want you to see where, at least at the beginning, where these values are changing from. So negative 4x cubed plus 28x squared minus 20x. Again, x cubed, x squared, and x, they are not like terms, so I cannot combine them. This is a cubic trinomial. All right, why don't you try number seven? We'll do number eight together. You try number seven, see what you can do. Pause the video. All right, so we're gonna have negative three times three is negative nine x to the, and then I'm going to add 2 plus 2 is 4, negative 3 times 6 is negative 18, x to the 2 plus 1 is 3, negative 3 times negative 5 is a positive 15 x squared. So that is a quartic trinomial. Now we're going to do the same thing in number 8, except we have two sets of variables to worry about. So we're just going to work with the x's and then we'll work with the y's after we multiply our coefficients. So 2 times 5 is 10. x, we've got a 1 here. 1 plus 2 is 3. y, 3 plus 2 is 5. So that first term, that first round of multiplying is done. Now I'm ready for the second round. So now I'm going to do the 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 is 6 x times x, so that's x to the first times x to the first, 1 plus 1 is 2, y, and then we've got 3 plus 2 is 5. And then now I'm going to do this last round of multiplying, so I'm going to do 2 times 7 and get 14, x to the first times x to the first is x squared, and y to the third times y to the first is y to the fourth. Now, I have to have the exact same variables with the exact same exponents in order to add them, and that includes the pair. So even though this one is an x squared and this one is an x squared, these guys don't match, so they're not like terms. And same thing goes with this one. This one is a y to the fifth, this one is a y to the fifth, but this is an x cubed, this is an x squared. So they don't match exactly in the variables with the exponents, so we can't combine them as like terms. All right, we are going to jump, if you're in the notes, 
I don't recall what page this is, but this is, you're going to skip over some more multiplying, and you're going to um, go to factor how to greatest common factor, and they pop up in a little bit. Once you find that, this is undoing the distributive property. So what you're going to do, we're going to have an example problem here we're going to work through, and we're going to fill in the steps. So you're going to be looking for a greatest common factor. So you're going to look at the coefficients. So I'm looking at 30, 5, and negative 25. And you're going to ask yourself, is there a number that I can divide 35 and negative 25 by evenly? And so we ask ourselves that question and we say, yes, we're going to divide by 5. So then we're going to look at the variables. And so now we're looking at x cubed, x squared, and x. And can I factor out, can I take away from each of those terms a variable? from every term. Everybody's got an x, so I can take one away from everybody. Now usually the key is, it's in standard form, look at the last term. If that last term has a variable, whatever that variable is to that power, that is the greatest common factor. Each term has at least one x, therefore I can factor out an x. So let's try that. What does that look like? So what we're going to do is once we have figured out what we're dividing by, that's the greatest common factor, we're going to write it down. So the greatest common factor for this polynomial is 5x because you can divide every term by 5x evenly without creating a fraction. In parentheses, behind the greatest common factor, so right now we have a greatest common factor of 5x. We're undoing that distributed property. So what we need are we need some parentheses, and then we're going to fill in those parentheses with each term that we can divide, right? The quotient, what we get when we divide, of each term by dividing by the greatest common factor. Don't forget the plus or minus signs. The factored form of this polynomial is 5x times 6x squared plus x minus 5. And then we're going to multiply to check. So I need to have it set up like a distributed property problem. So sometimes people will just give me this. Sometimes people will just give me this. So make sure I have both of them because when I go to multiply to check, um, you're not going to have anything to multiply if you don't have both pieces. So let's pull it all together. You've got all of the um, notes now. Right in this moment, we're just identifying the greatest common factor. So let's look. 3, negative 9, and negative 12. What can I divide by? I can divide by a 3. All of them are divisible by 3. Then I'm going to look at the last term because it's in standard form. Does the last term have a variable? Last term does not have a variable, so this is my greatest common factor. Now, to finish out the problem, right now it just says identify. But let's go ahead and finish out the problem because I think I confused a lot of people if I just stopped there. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide each piece. So this is my greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. We're going to divide each piece by 3. So 3x three cubed, 3 divided by 3 is 1. You can put a 1, but you don't have to. 1x cubed. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3x squared, and then negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. So I have divided out that greatest common factor, and then if I go back through and I'm checking, 3 times 1 is 3x cubed, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9x squared, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. This matches what I started with, so I am good to go. All right, let's look at number 2. What can I divide each of the coefficients by? 4, 20, 36. I can divide by 4. And then I look at my last term. Do you see here? I have an x squared. So this is going to be... 4x squared. As long as you're in standard form, that's where I steal my greatest common factor from. Let's put in parentheses. Now, when we talk about taking, or we're um, getting those x's figured out, we're, I'm going to talk about taking them away. So let's think. 4 divided by 4 is 1. x to the 4th. I have 4 x's, and I'm going to take 2 of them and put them out in front. So if I have 4 and take 2 of them and put them in front of the parentheses, I have 2 left inside the parenthesis. 
and then 20 divided by 4 is 5. All right, I have three x's. x cubed is 3. I'm going to take two of those x's and put them outside in front of the parentheses. So I'm just going to have one x left behind. And then plus 36 divided by 4 is 9. And then I have x squared. I have two x's. I'm going to take both of them and put them out in front so I don't have any x's left behind. So I'm just going to have that 9, that constant there. So this would be factoring out the greatest common factor. This would be my answer. And this is going to be me checking. So 4 times 1 is 4. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. 4 times 5 is 20. x squared times x is x to the third. And then 4 times 9 is 36, and then I have an x squared. And if you notice, that's exactly what we started with. All right. So let's try number 3. Factor out a greatest common factor. So what can I divide 9 and 45 by evenly? 9. I look here. Is there a variable that I can take out? No. So there's no variable in my greatest common factor. So then I'm going to divide by 9. 9x divided by 9 is x. 45 divided by 9 is 5. Multiply to check. 9 times x is 9x. 9 times 5 is 45. So it checks out. But this is my answer. Not the check. All right, let's look at 4. 7 and negative 21. What can I divide both of them by? I can divide by 7. I look here. Do I have a variable? I do. I have an x, so that means I can take out an x. Now, this is only if it's in standard form. If it's not in standard form, it won't work. All right, 7 divided by 7 is 1x. I have two x's here. I'm going to take one of them out and put it in front of the parentheses. So I only have x to the first. You can put a 1 there. You don't have to. Negative 21 divided by 7 is negative 3. I'm going to take this x, put it out in front. This x right there, put it out in front so there aren't any x's left behind. Let's check this. 7 times 1 is 7. x times x is x squared. 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. And then I just have an x, and that matches what I started with. All right you try number five. See what you can do with number five. All right, 18 and 12. I want greatest common factor. So if you said two, you found a common factor, but I think the greatest common factor is six. I look at my last term. Does it have a variable? It does. It has an x cubed. So I'm going to take away three x's from each of those. 18 divided by six is three. And then I have x to the 6. 6 minus 3 is x to the 3rd. Then I'm going to do 12 divided by 6 is 2. And I'm going to take all of these guys and put them out in front so I don't need any variables inside the parentheses. So multiplying, distributing, you add exponents. When you factor, you subtract exponents. All right, so let's check. 6 times 3 is 18 x cubed times x cubed, add them, 3 plus 3 is 6, and then 6 times 2 is 12, we've got x to the third. All right, let's look at number 6. We've got 15, 25, and 55. I'm thinking 5. I'm going to look here. Do I have a variable? Yes, I do. I have an x, so I'm going to take out an x. So 15 divided by 5 is 3 x to the fourth, I'm going to take away one of its x's, so it's going to drop it down to x cubed. Negative 25 divided by 5 is negative 5. x, I'm going to take away from x squared one of its x's, so that's just going to be an x left behind. And then 55 divided by 5 is 11. I'm going to take away its x. There I go. And then multiply to check. So I've got 15x to the fourth minus 25x squared plus 55x. Okay, let's see what else we got. You think you can try number seven? Ooh, number eight looks tough. Try number seven, see what you can do. Pause the video. 
All right, for the 9, 15, and 12, the greatest common factor is 3. I look here. Ooh, I can take out an x squared. So that means from my exponents, I'm going to subtract 2 off of each one. So I've got 9 divided by 3 is 3. x to the 6 minus 2 is 4. And then I'm going to do 15 divided by 3 is 5. x to the 4 minus 2 is x squared. And then 12 divided by 3 is 4. x squared. And then I'm doing 2 minus 2. There's no x's left behind. There we go. Now the check is not necessary unless you want to make it necessary. If you find that you are getting a lot of these wrong, you might want to force yourself to check. I'm not going to force you to check, but I'm going to be like, that's not right. You didn't check. So it's something that you kind of have to make yourself do, even if it's just a mental check on that. All right, let's look at number eight. We look at our three and 15. That's going to be, they have three in common. I can divide both of them by three. And then now we're going to have to play around with who has the smallest exponent. So if I compare x to the fourth and x cubed, um, x cubed is the smallest exponent. So that's the smallest number of x's I can take away. Then we would also have to look at the y's. So I have y squared and y cubed. This y squared has the smallest exponent. So that's what I'm going to put here. And then I'm going to do what I have been doing. I'm going to put up my parentheses. 3 divided by 3 is 1. All right, I have x to the 4th. I'm taking away from the 4. I'm taking away 3. So 4 minus 3 is 1. Shouldn't get any negative numbers here. Might get 0, but never get any negative numbers. If you do get negative numbers, you take out something too big. All right, y squared, and I'm taking out y squared. 2 minus 2 is 0. So there's nothing there to worry about. All right, now we're going to jump to the 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then x cubed, so I've got 3 minus the 3 in front of my parentheses is 0, so don't have to worry about that. y cubed, and then I'm taking out y squared, so 3 minus 2 on my y is 1. And then you can double check it. 3x to the, remember there's a 1 there, 4y squared, and then 15x cubed. Y to the, remember there's a 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. So we match what we started with. So it's a great way to double check and make sure you're right. And then you can, usually it's a little adjustment. You can be like, oh, I didn't, you know, this, these exponents don't add together. I can do a quick change. Man, these go on and on forever. Why don't you try 9 and 10 by yourself? See how it goes. Pause the video. All right, so 9 and 3, I can factor out a 3. This is the smallest x with the exponent. This is the smallest y with the exponent. Now, I'm just going to divide my coefficients and do some subtractions. 9, minus, or 9 divided by 3 is 3. x to the 7 minus 2 is 5. y to the 5 minus 5 is 0. Don't need to write that. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1 x squared, and then we got x squared. So um, 2 minus 2 is 0, so don't have to worry about that. Let's look at our y's. 6 minus 5 is 1. I can write a 1 there. I don't have to. All right, 15, 10, and 5, all divisible by 5. Everybody's got a y. This one's got the smallest exponent. Everybody's got a z. This one's got the smallest exponent. 15 divided by 5 is 3. That's going to be y squared, z squared. 10 divided by 5 is 2. That's going to be y, no z, because we took it out. And then negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1. No y, but we do have a z. All right, so this is a check to see how you've gone and done so far. You should pause the video, try to work these problems out. I'm going to show you the answers. I'm probably not going to be able to work them out for you right away, but if like you're missing number two and you want to see it in action or something like that, send me an email, let me know, um, so then that way I can help you out. But pause the video, work these problems. All right, here's the answer to number one. Here's the answer to number two. 
Here's the answer to number three. Here's the answer to number four. And here's the answer to number five. So if you had trouble with any of those, let me know. I can even do a quick video just for you. Um, but if you're doing great and you're getting all the answers right, awesome. If you are not, we need to talk about it. All right, I will see you in the next video. Bye.